Welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we are going to talk about logical operators and along with or. What does that mean? Sometimes we have conditions where we want to test more than one condition. Like, suppose it is raining outside and it is windy outside, then we should wear a raincoat. That means if both conditions are true, it's raining and it's windy, we should wear a raincoat. Now an or is one or the other. If it's raining outside or it's really sunny outside, we should bring an umbrella. So if it's rainy outside, we need the umbrella to keep the rain off us. If it's sunny outside, we need to keep the umbrella to keep the bright sun off of us. So we need to use an or. If it's raining, then we use the umbrella. Or if it's sunny, then we use the umbrella. If it's not raining and it's not sunny, so like it's cloudy and overcast, we would not use the umbrella. So the or means one condition or the other is true. Then we do the resulting statements. So either one of them is true. Now, both could be true. Like if you're having a sun shower, then it'd be raining and you would need, um, it'd be sunny, so you would need an umbrella. But it doesn't really matter that it's sunny outside it only matters that it's raining outside. So we use the umbrella. See, it doesn't matter if both are true for an or. As long as one of them is true, then the or happens. So let's take a look at this in Arduino and see what our code would look like for this. So first what I've done is I've built a new circuit. This is something we haven't seen before. So let's examine this a little bit. I have three LEDs on here. Both, all three of them have the same resistor value and the resistance is 120 ohms. I've made three LEDs, three different colors, a blue, a red, and a green. And I've matched them into pins six, five, and four. And I powered the um, power bar and grounded the grounding bar. So that way everything can run off of those two bars for the grounds. Then I have this new thing. I have these things called switches. Switches can go on and off, just like any other switch. So if I hit it, it'll slide off, but it only works when it's running. It doesn't go off unless I'm running it. Right now you can see to the left is on, to the right is off. And I have three pins on a switch. It works a lot like a potentiometer, whereas each of the three pins has to be connected. One was for power, one was for ground, and the middle one is the data. So just like the potentiometer, we have data coming in on the middle pin and then a power on the left and a power on the right. The difference is it's just either on or off. So we don't need an analog read for this. We just need a digital read for this. And I put those digital reads into pins three and two. So this is our circuit that we've created. So let's run it and let's see what happens. So you can see some kind of crazy things are going on with the lights. So let's turn off both switches and see what happens if both switches are off. So if both switches are off, then the red light blinks. So both have to be off. That means that's an and. If the first switch and the second switch is off, then the red light blinks. What if I turn one of them on? Well, this is different. So if I turn one of them on, the left one, it looks like the green light is blinking and it looks like both the red light and the blue light are blinking. And it's kind of alternating back and forth between those two. So let's turn that switch off. Back to the red light blinking. Let's turn the other one on and see what happens. Now it looks like we have the same effect. So let's turn them both on and see what happens. Oh, now if they're both on, it looks like the blue light is blinking 
in alternating with the green light. Wow. So there's lots of interesting combinations going on here. I think we need to dive into the code to see what is really going on here. So I'm going to turn off both switches, stop the simulation, and go into the code. Make this a little bit bigger for us to see. There we go. So the first thing I've done is I've set up my pins like we did in our diagram. The blue pin, the red pin, the green pin, and switch pin one and switch pin two. So those pins are all set up like we normally do. Then I set up some variables called switch state one and switch state two. So that just sets what state is the switch in, either on or off. I define them at first as ones. It's not gonna matter because as soon as the code starts, I'm gonna read those switch pins. So whatever they're set to, as soon as the code starts, I'm gonna read that. In my setup, I'm gonna set the pin modes to output for the red, blue, and green pins. And I'm gonna switch the pin mode for um, the switch pin to input. Now remember, we for the buttons, we used input pull up. For the switch, we don't need to use an input pull up because it's not a push, it's not a bounce. There's not a bounce to a switch, it just turns on or off. And the reason why we're not using buttons is because in the, um, virtual one, you can't click two buttons at once. You only have one mouse, so you can't click both buttons. If you were doing this in the real, you could use buttons and just hold down the buttons both at the same time as opposed to using the switches. But for this, we're going to use the switches. And for my serial monitor, I did serial begin 9600. I'm just doing that so I can kind of keep track of what is going on with the pins. And we'll look at that in comparison with the code. First thing I did is I read the state of the switches. Make sure I'm reading that information immediately to check to see if the switches are on or off. Now I'm gonna do the fun part and do some testing of those switches. So here's my first conditional. Let me get some spaces in here. There we go. So if switch state one is equal equal to zero. That means if switch state one and zero are the same value. Now then we have this thing here where it's an ampersand and an ampersand. That means and. This is an and statement. So both these conditions have to be true for the statements to run. So if switch state one is equal to zero and switch state two is equal to zero, I have the red light blinking. And the way I'm accomplishing that is just a little for loop that's only gonna run three times and then stop. So that way I can move on just to check to see uh, if something else is happening. So it'll go back up to the top after it goes through the other if statements and um, blink the red light on and off three times at 100 milliseconds. So it's gonna blink it on and off three times at 100 milliseconds. That's if they're both off. Then at the end, I just make sure I turn it off after the for loop. That way the light is off when it exits that conditional. Let's look at the next conditional. If both switches are on, then blue blinks. So if they're both off, red blinks. If they're both on, blue blinks. So let's look at that in code. Let's forget about everything else and let's look at those two situations and make sure that's what's happening. So I'm going to hide the code again. I'm going to go back to my simulation here. Start my simulation. Okay, so we have both our lights are off, so red is blinking. I'm going to turn both lights on, both switches on. And now we can see that blue is definitely blinking. There's something else going on over here with the green, but we're gonna talk about that in a minute. If I turn them both off, we got red blinking, so they're both off, that's an and. Both switches are off, one and two. I'm gonna turn them both on. They're both on, and now blue is blinking. 
and red is not. And then we have this thing with green, but we're going to take a look at that. So let me stop and look at our code. Ah, here we go. On to green. Now I have a new conditional here. I'm using these two vertical slashes. These two vertical slashes mean or. So this is an or statement. So if switch one is on, or switch two is on, if either one of them is on, I'm blinking that green light. Now the opposite of that is if both of them are off, the green light won't blink. So go, let's go ahead and take a look at that and see if that is behaving as we expected it to. So I'm going to go here. Let's just focus on the green light. and turn them both off. If they're both off, then the green light is off. Now I'm going to turn one of them on. Let's start with this one. Switch one is on. And we'll see now the green light is blinking. But there's something else going on with those two lights together. But the green light is definitely blinking. Let's turn it off. And then turn the other switch on to see if we can get the green light to blink. And again, the green light is blinking, and there's something else going on with those other two lights. But the green light is definitely blinking with one of the lights, one of the switches on. I'm going to turn both switches off. And we can see again that the red light is blinking because both are off, and the green light is not blinking because neither of them is on. So we needed one of them on for the green light to blink. So let's go back and look at our code now. So if one of them is on, either one, then the green light for sure blinks. Now let's look to see what is going on here. Same for loop that we expected before, just turning it on and off with a 100 millisecond delay. And you could always change those numbers, make it faster or slower. Now this one is really interesting. What I've done is made a pretty complex conditional. Look at that whole thing. So the first part of it is if switch one or switch two is on. So if one of them is on, then I have an and statement. And it is not true. That's what that exclamation mark means. It means whatever is in here, we're going to look at the opposite. So and it is not true that switch one is on and switch two is on. So what I'm saying here is one is on, but not both of them, then the red and blue will blink together. So if I turn them both on, the green will blink for sure because one of them is on. If both of them are on, the blue will blink. However, because I said I don't want them to blink together when they're both on, so it's not and means not in addition to, and then we're going to say not true, so they both can't be on, I'm not going to make them both the red and the blue blink together. So this only happens when one of them is on and not both of them are on just one of them. This is a special kind of combination statement called an XOR. One on, but not both. There are some languages that have a special symbol for an XOR, and then you don't have to worry about doing that complicated statement. So uh, it does make it a little bit easier in certain languages. So in this language, if we wanted to do an XOR, I'm going to hide with some comments that if statement and put in an XOR. If switch state 1 equals equals 1, and XOR looks like this. It's a um, caret symbol. So if either one of them equals one,
but not both of them. That's what this means. Either one of them, but not both. So this is kind of the simple version of what's down here. But you really have to know what that symbol means. So if I start this now, it should have exactly the same behavior as before. So if we look at this, this one is on and this one is off. So they're both blinking together. If I turn them both on, we no longer have them both blinking together. If I turn this one off and leave the right one on, again, we have them both blinking together. So that's the X or symbol. One last thing I wanted to talk about in terms of the coding of this, if we go back up to our first statement here, this first and statement, we don't need both ampersands in this language. They allow us to do just one ampersand. However, in most languages, you need both ampersands. So I could get rid of the one and it would still work and just have a single ampersand. However, it's not a great habit to get into because other languages require both. But I'm just going to show you that it does work. And I can do the same thing with the or and just use one vertical line. It does work. And you'll notice that here, I just for the XOR, I have a single caret symbol. It does not work to do two caret symbols. That does not work. So I would get an error. So if I run this now, it all still works with just the singles. Everything still works the same as before. If I stop the simulation and go in here and try to put in two caret symbols, you can see we get an error that doesn't work. We can't do the two caret symbols. So XOR is kind of the weird one that you can only do an XOR using that single caret symbol. For the other ones, you could make the decision to use both symbols, two ampersands. And you could make the decision to use two vertical slashes, and it'll work just fine. Or you could use one ampersand and one vertical slash, and it would also work just fine. So that is all we have for today. I know that was a lot. I'll see you next time.